This will conclude the topic of propaganda. I am going to be more brief in this one and just touch on the most important things. I think there are only a handful of you that are particularly interested in this, so I will finish this topic and move on to something else. I do have a couple other ideas I have been thinking about. I was going over common propaganda techniques in alphabetical order in the last video, so I will continue with that first. Dehumanization and demonization are important ones. They are pretty self-explanatory, though. We have all seen the World War II posters of the Japanese and Germans, or the anti-Semitic ones made by the Nazis. I go over this in detail as part of a video on groupthink, which is called Us vs. Them. Emotion is a very effective way to control people. You can stir people up with positive emotions and a sort of group identity. The mega churches here in the U.S. are a good example of that. A more benign example is a concert. The band does this as part of a show for your entertainment. I find it quite enjoyable myself. Another good motivator is anger. Spinning facts in such a way as to make them seem more personal is very effective. You make it seem as though whatever you were spinning was done to them personally as an insult. Trolling works pretty good, too. You bring on someone to be the bad guy and have them advocate a straw man version of whatever you oppose, then you demonstrate the kind of anger they are supposed to have in your rant. Monkey see, monkey do. But the most powerful motivating emotion is fear. Fear is the backbone of any good propaganda campaign. Fox News is a great example. They tell people about the impending doom that is sure to come from every topic they mention, like the Democrats being communist, socialist, and fascist all at the same time, or that Obama is a secret Muslim, you know, those evil people who want to blow up all Americans. Then they spin a scenario of doom, starting with a lie, and then moving into a slippery slope argument. Scared people are by far the easiest people to control. This leads me to a technique I really don't have a name for. It's when you convince people you are the only information source they can trust. That way you keep them from looking to other sources in attempts to corroborate what you say. The perceived liberal bias is an example, or when Christians say something is of the devil. Flag-waving is one that goes along best with some sort of nationalist movement. It attempts to justify things on the grounds that it is patriotic. Generalizations are very common, but also pretty self-explanatory. Half-truths are as well. Labeling is where you use certain names for things in order to get the targets feeling the way you want them to because of the connotations or other meanings they have. The guilt by association fallacy ties in with this as well. Euphemisms are the positive form and dysphemisms are the negative form. Pro-life is a euphemism for people favoring the criminalization of abortion, while pro-choice is one for people opposed to that. Their respective dysphemisms are anti-choice and pro-abortion, the later also being a straw man, implying a like of the procedure and or forced abortion policy for population control. I'm sure you can all think of plenty more of these. Our public discourse is unfortunately littered with them, coming from all sides. Latitudes of acceptance is best described like this. You parade Glenn Beck around, and then afterwards, Sean Hannity doesn't sound so crazy, and Bill O'Reilly sounds perfectly reasonable. Lying, obfuscation, oversimplification, and quoting out of context are all important, but very self-explanatory. I think pretty much everyone knows what they are. Rationalization is using positive, repeatable phrases that are very generalized in order to justify something. Scapegoating is another important one. Typical scapegoats in the U.S. are atheists, Muslims, Mexicans, homosexuals, and sometimes even Jews. 
repetitions and slogans are two that go together. You should all be very familiar with them, though. Stereotyping is one that everyone should have a good understanding of as well. The final one I want to mention is the third-party technique. This is where you pretend to be neutral. You act as a sort of front organization to lend credibility to your actual cause. You can also present something more extreme than your actual cause and then apply a little intellectual relativism. This plays on the false belief people have that when there are two opposing views, they are equally valid, and the truth lies somewhere in the middle. This way, you can advocate what you secretly believe in while still sounding reasonable. So, these techniques are how democracy is circumvented. Corporations control most information sources, so they can easily get their propaganda out to the masses. People's lack of critical thinking skills, plus their greed and selfishness, make them quite vulnerable to manipulation. For some people, how something makes them feel is what matters, and the actual truth of it is less important. Such people, you will find, are completely immune to logic and reason. Creationists are probably the best example of this. The amount of data they have to ignore is just staggering. Few scientific principles have such a gargantuan trove of evidence, not to mention all the counterclaims they have to fabricate. Until people start to recognize how they are being continuously manipulated, we will continue our voluntary self-subjugation, serving the interests of the oligarchic corporations and neo-aristocracy.